Matthew chapter 22 verse 36 to 40 the Bible said something master which is the greatest commandment in the law Jesus said unto him thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind 38 he says this is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets on today's episode of lifeline with comfort i'm going to show you the true meaning of love what does this scripture um talk about what does this scripture mean when it comes to love is the bible saying you should hang on loving god love others and not paying a lot of emphasis on yourself we would know after the break please don't go away do me a favor if you have not subscribed to this channel subscribe and get your friends in here let's have a ride Welcome back to Lifeline with Comfort. Lifeline with Comfort is a program designed to equip, inspire, empower, and motivate you to awaken the giant within you. If this is your first time, thank you for coming on to this program with me. And if it is not your first time, thank you for being a family member. I would like to ask that you kindly subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification bell. It's will help you to know whenever i drop a post on here and i'm so happy to connect with you so please drop your comments on the comment section below and let's have a great time now i read a scripture from the book of matthew chapter 22 verse 36 to 40 and it said a very it's a very common scripture that most believers know about the Pharisees, I beg your pardon, they were asking Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, hmm, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and all your might, love the Lord. So the first one was love the Lord. This con this was a bit different from what they understood with the law of Moses. The law of Moses was 10. And in those laws, there were things that were explicitly, um, you know, being put out by God. One of the things, do not covet your, your neighbor's property, do not uh, kill, do not, you know. So they were confused. And when he said that, he now jumped and said, the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. And may I tell you that when I hear people say, we look at it from two angles. Yes, I know Jesus said the second is like unto it. But can I say something? He didn't say the last is like unto it. He said the second is like unto it. And from that same scripture, I could see that he meant loving the, your neighbor as yourself. And loving your neighbor as yourself together for a reason. Why? If you are ineffective in loving yourself, you will not be able to love your neighbor can i say that people that are hot normally hurt others and people that love themselves will generously love others something you need to know as a christian is it is not out of place to pay attention to yourself i find people say oh, it's too carnal i mean it's make it i'm feeling like i'm thinking and talking about myself alone no it is not if you don't love yourself nobody will love you most men that abuse their wives in marriages or women that abuse their husbands are product of a loveless environment and so they don't know how to love themselves they don't know how to love people they don't see love as a natural trait can i say uh, very quickly there's something i was having a conversation with a friend of mine and uh we were talking about something you know there are some traits that you will know you you will see every lover every man or a woman you know that said they're falling in love with themselves there are things you see they do to themselves and i broke those things into five categories if the bible says love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and the second is like unto it love your neighbor as yourself how do you love god we love god by serving god don't we we love god by giving to god we love God by loving the people around us. Here's one thing I need us to know. As much as you are loving God, I want you to turn around and 
look at doing some of those things for yourself i know people that love god so much that they don't even think about themselves and god gave you a responsibility not only to love him but to love him and then learn loving yourself from him what do i mean there are many ways you can love yourself we love god we serve god you must love yourself and serve yourself because it will be easy for you to love others and serve them there are five things i'm going to tell you tonight and there are five love languages that you must turn around and put on yourself i know it's a season of love and a lot of people are telling themselves you know i don't have a vow i didn't have a loving husband i don't have a loving wife but you must make it a point of duty to begin to tell yourself to do some things with yourself do you know before i got into a serious marital relationship there are things i do i take myself out oh yes i take myself out i spoil myself i look after myself i want to drive a sensible car i want to to you know live in a sensible place i i took care of myself and so here is something that i think everyone at the sound of my voice must change the first thing you need to do is to use words of affirmation for yourself you need to tell yourself i am great i am beautiful you know some people are good at saying those words to other people but they are not very good at saying to themselves and so if you're not good in saying to yourself it's hardly very genuine having kids has shown me that the right words must be spoken over them and it's not my responsibility alone to do that my husband does that but then i turn around and bless myself you see when the psalmist was speaking he said bless the lord oh my soul he was talking to his soul he was telling his soul to do something and so that means you can affirm some things with your soul comfort you are fearfully and wonderfully made comfort you are blessed amongst women comfort you can tell yourself and so when you love somebody you tell them you do once because we are commanded to love ourselves you must tell yourself comfort i love you you can't wait for someone to always tell you you can't wait you say no one has even told me i love you in a year i found a conversation with a young girl and she said she's not in a relationship and um she's just planning to to be in a relationship and all that and she said mama do you know what nobody has told me they love me and i said what happened to your mouth tell yourself nobody has told you you are beautiful what happened to your mouth tell yourself i am beautiful can you type on your comment section i am beautiful i am great i am awesome i love my hair can you just tell yourself say some words of affirmation to yourself right so if you love somebody you pay attention to them number two do you pay attention to yourself do you think it's overrated for you to rest I used to be of that school of thought. I used to think to myself, there's so much happening on earth. I need to be here. I need to do that. Till I got a, a warning from God about three years ago. And that warning was look after yourself. If anything happens to you and you're dead, everything will continue. Love yourself is not a selfish decision. And so I began to inculcate rest relaxation if i as a matter of fact there's so many movies people have watched on earth i have not watched because i'm like oh my god i'm watching a movie it's a waste of time but i had to change now i still don't do it so much but i had to introduce that because i needed to find another way to relax a little bit so you must pay compliment to those people when you, you i mean i beg your pardon whenever you want someone to know that you love them isn't it whenever you know want someone to know that you love them you pay them compliments you tell them i love you i care about you i need you you are the sugar in my tea you are the whatever 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 why don't you say that to yourself because you are contravening the, the scriptures if you don't tell yourself that so pay yourself compliments that's number two now do you know that when you love somebody and they do something you brag about it you talk about it it's high time you begin to be grateful for what god is doing through you that means you be proud of talking about it be proud of sharing it 
you are not arrogant, but you are happy that God is able to find you a valuable asset to use. And so you must begin to talk about it. I know people that are creators or people that are preachers or people that do one or two things and they are embarrassed to talk about it. Oh, you're a preacher, but every time it's only Sarah Jakes you share. I, I, I celebrate her. We all celebrate her, don't we? But then you must be proud of what God is doing through you because Rome was not built in a day, but it started in a day. And so you must thank God and celebrate God. You're a worship leader, you're a singer, and whatever you are, and you, you're, you are not proud of talking about it. Then how do you think others will be proud? So I said, like I said, the third thing is, yes, when you love somebody, you brag about them. Like when we love God, we brag about God, isn't it? We say, he's my mighty, he's a mighty God, he's an awesome God. When you love your husband, you say, oh, he's the strongest man on earth, he's my superman, he's my wallet, he's all that. You say that, say some of those about yourself. You need to feel good about yourself. You need to spoil yourself. You need to take yourself out. Brag about God's faithfulness over your life. The third thing you do to others that you can now do for yourself, you encourage others, right? And you support others. It's time to encourage yourself and support yourself. What do I mean? The Bible says something about um, David. The Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. What, me, what it meant was that ha, he looked around. Nobody was probably encouraging him. In fact, he was in trouble, he was running away from his son. But what did he do? He looked in the mirror and said, Hey, the King David, is this you? You are blessed. Ah, forget about those who are chasing you as if you are not a king. You are lifted. Forget about the things that are happening. The closed door is not a closed destiny. Or that they are coming all against you. How are they increased that trouble you? But David, listen, 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 listen. You are loved of God. David did what encouraged himself in the Lord. You must begin to encourage yourself. It's a sign that you love yourself. Encourage yourself. Talk to yourself. Don't believe what the devil says. Let me tell you, if you don't know who you are, the world will tell you who you're not. So you got to know who you are and say, oh God, I thank you. Lavish love on yourself. I kind of want to see you put it on the comment section. Lavish love. Say, I love myself. You can put your name there. My name is Comfort. So I say, I love Comfort. You can say, my name is Katharina. I love Katharina. My name is Noel. I love Noel. You know, just love on yourself. Come on. The fifth thing I want to say, we say to other people, but we have to turn it around and we need to say it to ourselves, is you will show people empathy. I encourage that. I love people. I love, in fact, I love people. Okay. And I empathize with people. But it's high time we begin to empathize. I didn't say pity. I didn't say sorry. You know, there are sometimes you can pity yourself out of so many. No, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying give yourself a break. You know, you don't have to always fail an exam. But if you do sometimes, tell yourself, you know what? Comfort, you will bounce back again. You will be fine. Don't be your is don't be your worst enemy because sometimes the words you say to yourself and about yourself that runs in your head about yourself keeps you where you are and not allowing you to keeps you where you are and doesn't allow you to move forward to the next level so you need to empathize you need to tell yourself mm, you've been a good mom you know sometimes some people will never tell you so, so you will never hear it. Some husbands never tell their wives. Some wives never tell their husbands. If you're a husband or your wife, please stop it. You need to tell your husband, you need to tell your wife. You know, but if you are single or even if you're married or not, tell yourself, oh, I've been a good mom. If you don't see anything to say, you have kids, but you don't see anything to say to yourself. Look at your womb and say, my womb has been a good one. <laughs> I mean, you need to tell yourself something. The Bible says something, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. There's enough happening all over the world to keep you angry and sad and frustrated. The depression uh, uh, statistics of people living on antidepressants has increased significantly. May I say to you that you can avoid all of these things by looking back and say, oh no, you are doing well. You have tried. You are great. You know, it doesn't stop you from pushing to become who God has called you to be. And so to fulfill that scripture in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, you must not 
just love God. But you must love God with your your with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. What it means is the totality of you must love God. Then he said the second. Let me see. You must replicate what you're doing over there. The totality of you. You know, suppose so in love with a man that he slaps them and they're cool with it. That's not love. That's foolishness. Some people are so in love with someone that, oh my God, I love her. I want to be like her and she's ignoring you. That's not love. That's foolishness. Some people are so in, in love with someone else that they forget who they are. You must be, you must remember that you're a limited edition. No, yes. You must remember that you're a limited edition. And as much as you admire people, you don't want to copy them. You admire people, but you don't want to copy You're a limited edition and listen to me the big difference uh, between copying from others and learning from them if you perpetually copy from others you will become their photocopy learn from others and stay original you are a limited edition what did i say don't copy anybody learn from them stay original because they are a limited version it's actually wrong in simple terms if i would like to put it to effectively love god effectively love your children family members your neighbors and don't love yourself staying in an abusive marriage and being battered and shattered by a man or a woman is an example for me of someone that doesn't love themselves in fact, if you love God, you will look after what God created. You were created in God's image. And can I tell you something? That God gave you a responsibility over you to look after you. And so if you say to yourself, just because of the stigma of not being married, I want to stay in a loveless marriage. You're joking. You want to pray? Get out of that loveless marriage. Pray. God into the heart of the man. When he change, you move in. Other than that, you must stay remembering that you have a responsibility to love yourself. No one is going to love you more than you love yourself. Do well. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Do me a favor. Love yourself so that you can effectively love others. Until this time next week, stay loving. Think about yourself. It's not being selfish. Pray for yourself. It's not being selfish. If people see that you can love, you love yourself properly, they would love you too. And I'll see you next time. Do drop your comments. Follow me on all social media platform. Subscribe to this channel. And I'll see you next time. God bless you mightily. Bye-bye.